Today we're talking all about semi-precious beads and you might think these are real turquoise, but we're gonna show you how to make these. I'm here with author and designer Cindy Holt. And Cindy, this is just a beautiful way to make your own faux stone. You know, and it's such a simple technique. It's a great thing you can do with your kids, with your Girl Scout or Boy Scout troop, you Good know? Good idea. Uh-huh, show them a little bit about how to do stone. The trick to this is I use a black alcohol ink to get the black matrix in the cl in the clay, and, as opposed to using a black clay. Okay, so you start out with a turquoise color, turquoise polymer color clay. polymer clay, and uh, just a couple drops on on the ink, and then I spread it with a cotton ball. And you'll notice I'm wearing gloves. Yes, I did notice it's that. It's because alcohol ink doesn't come off with water. I found out the hard way. <laughs> so I would cover this whole sheet of clay, and then set it aside and let that dry, and make sure it's dried thoroughly. Okay. I know, I have to wait, and I'm such an impatient person to do that. Then the next thing we're going to do is make our stack of clay. And all I do is I cut matchsticks of clay. So you're just using your fine blade? Using my fine blade. And you don't even measure? No. I should, no. Have, known. I should have guessed. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> uh, the less you measure, especially when you're doing natural things, the better. So you make a stack of this, and I'm going to add in a little bit of gray clay this time. You can add in different blues of clay. You can add in some of the stone effect clays, whatever you want. And you'll notice this clay's thinner, right? Because I don't want as much of this in my stack as I do of the black. So and the I'm turquoise. guessing that before you started, you ran all this through the pasta machine. Ran it through the pasta machine. The turquoise on the whitest setting of the pasta machine. Conditioning it and also getting the th not really yeah, conditioning. you know me conditioning. Right, I don't right. really condition a lot. So, so, so I have my thickness. stacks here. Okay. And I'm going to take the stack and I put it in my hand. Another reason for the gloves. Another reason because it will come off on your hands just a little bit, especially if you're making a lot of beads. And I'm just going to push it together with my hands a little and make it into, hmm, what do you want to call that, a little core? Sure. Now, here's the trick. Twist it. This is like when you marbleize clay. Just twist it a little bit. And that is causing the color to spread out, the ink color, right? Uh-huh, and it gives a more random pattern to it. I'm gonna flatten it with my hands just a little bit. Now we're gonna run it through the machine again on the widest setting. Okay. And you can see how that's starting to pattern oh, yeah. through there. And you can really tell the gradation of the ink. Right, you can see how the ink breaks up in there in a fine way that you can't get when you use just clay to do it. I'll run this through a couple. Oh, I love that piece. <laughs> so now you're ready. I'm ready. I'm <laughs> happy with that. Now, I don't like to sand clay. Okay. So what I do is I take a piece of paper, my trusty index cards, I put the clay in there, take a roller or anything like that, and just rub it a little bit. Oh, so you're really burnishing it before burnishing you even bake it. I'm burnishing it, right. So then it's nice and smooth and ready to go. I take my oval cutter, let's use this size today, and I cut it, I'm gonna put it on the paper because I want my clay to stick in my cutter. And I twist it just a little bit. Now my clay is in the cutter. I take this over, I have a sheet of clay that I've taken a bamboo skewer and made a channel. That's going to be for our bead hole. And I put this on here and punch it through. So you don't have to bake it with anything inside? No. All right, so once your two pieces are together, that would be the channel that your beading wire or stretchy cord exactly. goes through once you exactly. make your piece. And you can clear your hole if you need to once you get it punched through. But see, my hole is nice there. Right. And I don't have to worry about trying to drill through and possibly damaging my surface. That's a great idea. I never thought about making a channel like that. Yeah, it works really nicely, and especially because it gives you a bigger channel for the elastic. Right, so now you're ready to bake this piece. You're ready to bake it. And you follow the instructions on the package, of course. We'll have the complete instructions on the right. website. If you want to glaze it, you can glaze it. Yeah, let's take a look at the glazed ones here. You can see how shiny they are. Mm -hmm. So you did that after you baked it. After I baked it. You can also sand it and uh, burnish it if you want to. I kind of like the, the matte surfaces. I also like to get the little creases in the clay. I think that's much more natural looking. Right. This piece here, I've added a little bit of white to the clay to make it lighter and a little bit of the stone to give us a little bit different texture there. It's beautiful. Now you had one more quick tip I wanted you to share. I did. <laughs> to make the nugget necklace over here, you just take the plain clay and you cut it into the matchsticks mm -hmm. and take your blade and chop those into pieces. So again, you're randomly just chopping this up just randomly chopping it up. And you take those pieces and gather them up in your hand 
push them together. Don't roll it because you don't want it to get too smooth. Okay. And it will make a nugget for you. And then what I would do is my boys were little, I'd give it to them and they'd take it out and roll it in the dirt for me to add some more organic materials to it. Right. Before so I you're baked getting it. that natural look. More of a natural look. And then well, after I baked it, I just put a little black paint on it. To so highlight. let's take a look at this one. You can see where it does. It looks real. Yeah. It looks like turquoise. Yeah. Made out of polymer clay. Yeah, I've worn that necklace into a gallery before in, uh, you know, then Southwest in Arizona, and the person working in the gallery, she goes, "Oh, I love your turquoise," and I said, <laughs> "It's not turquoise. It's it's polymer clay." <laughs> she didn't say a word. She just turned around and walked away. Oh no. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the green one. This is using the same technique that you showed us first mm -hmm. with the ink. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. This is a great project. Appreciate it. Sure. And I'll be right back with a bracelet idea for you.